recording hello guys this is just one guy and this is my tutorial series unity for noobs now in this episode we're going to put a first person controller on the net uh over a network using unity's new uh networking system at 5.1 one of my subscribers was asking how to uh how to do this i've already put up a video on how to do the uh, how to do how to do it with a third person controller but they were asking how you do it with a first person controller and it's pretty much the same deal but it was too complicated to explain in comments so I had to uh, make a video now I know I haven't made a video in a while and that's because I've been working on my game uh, called Dragonforge and I just haven't had time to put up videos but uh, let's get to it now first you're gonna see an example of, on what I've done and I've just created the game and I've already done the whole, the whole thing and I've just created these two games <laughs> This is my second time recording because the first time I forgot to hit the record button. So everything's already set up. Okay, let's just hit start there. And this is just going to be an example of what I'm trying to, I mean, what I'm going to show you to do in the tutorial. And look at the client. Now, I've animated the character, but you don't need to do that. I've just uh, given an example on how it's animated. I just wanted to give an example on how easy it is to animate it. And I'm just gonna go here. And you can see if I move to the side, the character's animated. Move forward, animate it, back, uh, back. Now all these uh the link to all these animations and all these packs will be in the uh, descriptions down below. I'm just using the base male muscular pack and uh the soldier pack, I believe. And I'll have the link to those in the description down below. And this is basically it. You can see it works over the network. We have a client, we have a server, and our character is fully animated as much as I want it. Now, I was, I was kind of lazy with the animations. Obviously, for your game, you want to spend a lot more time here and animate the characters a lot more better. Well, a lot better. But just because this was a tutorial, I got kind of lazy with it. And you can kind of tell in some regards. Now, the camera, you're going to have to play with this a little bit and move the camera a little bit in front of the soldier, which I'll go over in a minute, so you can see the soldier's feet and you're not inside the soldier's body. You can see I didn't completely do it, but I mean, uh, succeed in, oh, well, I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't completely uh, succeed in not getting any clipping. That's what I was trying to avoid, but... I did a pretty good job of avoiding the clipping as much as possible. But again, in your game, you would work on that a little more than I did since this is just a tutorial. Okay, let's just X these out. Make sure we're recording this time because I don't want to record this another time. Yeah, we are. Okay. Now... I've only wrote three scripts for this. Well, I wrote uh, two scripts and I modified one script, which is the rigid body first pressure controller. But let's go over our uh, first scene first. Okay, I just uh, set up an empty game object and I've renamed it Network Manager. And all I did was I added this uh, Network Manager HUD. Now when you add this, it's gonna automatically add the Network Manager. And let's go over that if it wants to open <laughs> okay now first we have this don't destroy and load this is very important there should only ever be one network manager ever in your game you you have no need to put a network manager in any other scene because we just want this network manager to exist in every scene and that's controlled by don't destroy and load this makes sure that the network manager isn't destroyed when you're loading up a game so uh, make sure there's no network managers or nothing like that in uh in other scenes also you don't need cameras in the other scene unless you're doing something complicated like cutscenes or something like that which is beyond the scope of this tutorial uh, I mean of this tutorial so but uh, just working other other cameras would interfere with the way uh, the player script works it would not be able to tell whose cameras who so you don't need any other cameras or any other network managers in any scene and this makes sure that this one network manager will exist in all the scenes it will just say don't destroy and load 
and normally when you uh, load up a new level it destroys everything on the old level and then uh, brings everything from the new level in but since we click this it will say uh, keep this and don't destroy it so just make sure that's clicked the second one is uh, running background you also want to make sure this is clicked because when you create two games one is the server and one is the client and when you click off the window it'll stop running the game and kind of pause it to a degree and if you were doing that online it would uh it would stop the server for a second so the game couldn't update so we want the game running even if we click off the window so uh, make sure this is checked uh, running background next we have our offline scene and our online scene now this is uh, very important right here make sure before you uh, fill those in oh crap oh I made an accident there and it's gonna take a while to stop well I'm just gonna pause the video for a minute and let this go through I don't force nobody to sit through this because it's gonna go slow because I'm recording and I'm back now let me finish uh, explaining that the network manager uh, this computer wants to work there we go okay what I meant to hit up here was the build settings now make sure you before you put the uh, scenes in here you put the uh, build setting I mean you put them in the build settings first because it won't let you put it in a network manager if it's not in the build settings already now our first scene that's the opening scene that we want the uh, network manager to exist in with the buttons for the server and the client and our second scene is the scene we want to load into and that's how we'll set it up our offline scene will be the first scene with our network manager and our second scene right here our online scene is going to be the scene we want to load into now next we're going to go to the player prefab and we're just putting our player we want to instantiate in here and make sure this is clicked auto create player now normally all this would be clicked already I'm just going over it to me. just in case something goes wrong you uh, know how to fix it and then I believe that's it for that and then we have the network manager HUD which is just basically the GUI on screen now in your game you would want to change this too to something uh, better looking and something more versatile to and to your game but since this is just a tutorial I'm using the standard assets and all you have to do is make sure this is clicked which it should come already uh, come like that already sorry now let's go over the character yeah the character first okay this is just the rigid body first pressure controller and I've added a little uh, character here a little, little soldier model which will uh, link to him will be down in the description down below and all the other assets I used they're all free and I don't own them so you can just download them off the asset store okay we have our rigid body our capsule collider all the basic things uh, just going over that I believe that's the same yeah you has got the uh, rotation frozen just in case you, you didn't know how to use a rigid body and the use gravity is checked and our capsule collider which I modified slightly just to shape it a bit more to the character then we have our uh, first uh, sorry a rigid body first pressure controller now I've modified the script just a bit but uh, what we have here is our camera which is we are which will be our main character I mean uh, camera for our main character which will be the main camera needs to be a child of the character and then we have our movement settings our look and everything like that I'm not going to go over that right now because that's kind of standard unity what I've added is this it is mine and this is how the script tells whether it's your character or another person's character now if you've worked in the previous online system this should be familiar to you but uh, I've just added this variable in here and that's how it tells the difference and, and that's not important this won't even be on your character so we'll just remove that then we have our network identity make sure this is checked local player authority this allows you to control your player on your side of the network if this isn't checked